What's going on guys? So today you're in for a treat. So I am at Explore USA RV Super Center in Bernie, Texas, and I'm finally able to look at the brand new Alliance mid bunk. So this is really cool. And it's not really called a mid bunk. They call it, I think a multi-purpose room versus mid bunk. And you'll see why once we get inside, but this is gonna be really cool. And I have not walked in this unit yet. So it's gonna be really interesting for me to see for the first time. And I wanted to give you all my initial impressions. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, before we get any further, let's take a look at the numbers on this unit. So this has a gross vehicle weight rating of 16,800 pounds, cargo capacity of 2,804 pounds, rides on twin axles, 16 inch wheels and tires, and they are G rated. And they are slightly higher capacity G rated. Typically you're about 4,040 pounds per tire, 4,080 pounds in that range. And I believe these are gonna be 4,400 pound rated tires as well as upgraded leaf springs. That's something they do on pretty much all of their units. Also has Asdell composite side panels, another big claim to fame that uh, the folks over at Alliance have been doing since they started. This has the upgraded front pin box, the Rotoflex from LCI. I've had an opportunity to use this pin box for a while. It's a really, really great pin box. I've been using it on the Beacon that I've been reviewing. It also has the LCI automatic leveling system, the hydraulic system up front. Up here, this is a huge, huge front area. I mean, this is gigantic. Very, very cool. There's no generator installed in this specific unit. You can see your 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter and your hydraulic systems in here. One thing I don't really care for, this front door is a lot thinner than I thought it would be. I kind of expect them to use a slightly thicker material, but this one you can see it's, it's a little thinner than I would have expected, but it does the task. You have a separate little compartment here for your level up system. Here's your propane tank. Looks like you could fit a larger propane tank in here. You'd have to be careful though because this propane line kind of protrudes out. Now as far as the basement storage door goes, very nice and thick with nice dual slam latches. Tremendous amount of space down here. You can see it has the three inch aluminum bath deck, the ducting, everything is nice up top and you have these individual shut off valves which is also really nice here's your wet panel i do wish that they would put kind of a isolator right here just in case water starts spraying out if you have stuff here it's not gonna leak over but they do put a nice little pan underneath it that will collect it and funnel it out you have your nautilus board here as well complete with an outside shower and all of your levers plus your battery disconnect over here and then you have this panel right here, which is gonna cover all the plumbing and wiring behind this area. So it makes it easy to service. Nice strut arms holding this up. Coming back, you have your water heater outside of your furnace. They use this nice textured skirting right here as well. And it doesn't show dirt and streaking like you might see on some units. 50 amp connection up here. Here are the Sterling G-rated tires that they have on this unit. You can see this utilizes a 10 inch I-beam frame with a boxed section beneath it. Now that boxed section does a few things, but one of the things it does is it slightly enhances the rigidity of the frame, but it also elevates the frame up slightly so it's easier to level out the unit when you're behind these taller, newer pickup trucks. This is gonna have the Cree 3000 Moride upgraded suspension on it. And underneath here, it has an eight inch I-beam frame for the drop frame section. Kind of wish it had a 10 inch I-beam drop frame section right there. Rack and pinion slide, which I like. And then the slide up front here is a Schwintech slide. It does not have frameless windows, but there's a reason for that. They chose this style because it gives you better cross ventilation when the windows are open. A lot of seasoned campers will tell you that they actually like this style better, even though it's not quite as pretty as your frameless windows. You're probably gonna see a sewer hose carrier mounted underneath here somewhere. Yeah, I can see it way up there, right where the drop frame comes down. 
There is no rear bumper on this unit where you would traditionally house a sewer hose. A lot of RVs are eliminating the rear bumper. I'd love to know what your thoughts are there. It does have a two inch receiver complete with trailer light connections and chain loop. So you can technically haul a trailer. Just make sure you read your towing instructions here to ensure you're not going over the capacities at all. It is wired for a camera through that little hole below the center mount light and you have all LED lighting as well as a ladder to crawl on top. Sorry, the wind's really picked up right here. Around this side, you can see it has another rack and pinion slide. And they do utilize a slightly upgraded frame. Let me show you why. So as you come around, one thing you'll see is this little triangle section here that actually reinforces the shackle hangers and the equalizer hanger just to keep them from shearing off. So that's really nice. Plus it has a heavy duty shackle straps with greasable wet bolts. Coming around, tremendous storage. Now there's a lot of opportunity here to put some really nice outdoor features like a kitchen, things like that. But what's nice about this is if you don't want that stuff, you have the ability to store things like e-bikes or foldable bikes and things like that in here, which you might not normally be able to fit in just the front storage area, especially after you load it up with everything. But you can see you have your cable TV connection, power connections here. You have a power wire pass through right here as well. This is a wide body design. So instead of the traditional 96 inch wide unit, it's 101 inches wide. It's kind of common on these larger fifth wheels now. Very cool. This has dual awnings. You have an awning right here and you have a second awning right there. One thing I noticed, which is interesting, is they don't put that prep rod up there for the slide out awnings. So if you added slide out awnings to it, you'd have to install the rod or the track that actually mounts to the side of the RV. A lot of RVs come standard with that that little track there in place in case you're going to add slide out awnings. Nice thick baggage doors. You have a spray port right here as well so you can hose things off or spray things down from this side which I can really appreciate. This has the LCI solid step on it as well. Talk about the suspension, some of the heavier duty things that they put in place as well, just to make it last longer when you're gonna be towing it down the road. You know, towing confidence is such an important thing and it's always a good thing when RV manufacturers focus on that as opposed to just making it look pretty. All right, let's take a look inside of this Alliance Paradigm 390 MP. So 390 multi-purpose room, again, Asdell, and it is warranted for full-time RVing. Okay, so stepping inside, I'm gonna pan around real quick so you can see what, what all's going on here. We'll quickly look into the mid bunk or multi-purpose room right here. And then up front. So let's start right here because you guys know I'm a big fan of mid bunks and this is their version and it has the loft on top, which we'll go over in a second. But they have the little sofa area or love seat already folded out into a bed so you kind of know what this space looks like if you're going to utilize this as a mid bunk space. And it's, you know, reasonable size. Not a ton of room to get on and off of it, especially if you're on that side. But this is typically the challenge you're going to have with any mid bunk. So I don't think there's anything wrong here. The unique design behind this one is that there's no slide. So traditionally, the mid bunk in almost every case is going to have a slide out right here. And that slide out not only adds, you know, extra mechanics and extra complexity to the unit, it adds weight to the unit. And you know, if you can eliminate that, which they've done by simply kind of taking the room and turning it, it gives you a really cool space. Now, something else they've done here is put a functional office desk in here. So if you're not gonna utilize this as a bunkhouse, or if you don't use it much, you can use this as an office space. They put the cork board there, they put kind of a filing cabinet with drawers there, and there's a lot of depth to this. It looks to be 16 to 18 inches deep. So it's a good size and it's a good width as well. Definitely functional. They put a power outlet here, another one up here with TV connections. I kind of wish they would have put one with a bunch of USB ports here as well, because I think on most newer computers, USB connections are just as important as 110. You have a nice cabinet up top here, plus you have the MCD day-night roller shades there. And there's a good amount of height in here. You probably have upwards of about six foot three in terms of ceiling height in here. And it's gonna be tall enough for most folks. I think that if you're gonna be utilizing this as an office and you're primarily gonna be sitting in here, it really doesn't matter as long as it's not crazy short, but this is pretty nice. 
you have your AC duct right here, which is always a challenge in mid bunk style units because they have to get air from the top into this room and you know getting the right amount of air again can sometimes be a challenge but the nice thing about not having frameless windows is you can simply slide the window open get a ton of air blowing through this room anyways let's work our way to the front one thing that they do and i can appreciate this is they don't go with too much complex technology in terms of touch panels and things this is pretty much going to be all your main controls right for your slide outs your lighting everything and they've kept it kind of this traditional system because it's super easy to get to super easy to do the things that you want to do without having to go through multiple screens and worrying about that so i do like that then you have your ac controls and your max air vent plus your dimmer switch you have your tv signal booster with Wi-Fi, some plugs here as well, some lighting above, and it's a great place for a coffee maker. You have three AC units in this coach. They're all 13,500 BTU units. You have two right here, which are essentially direct fire. There's no ducting here. They just blow air straight out, which is nice because you get a lot of air in here. And then you're going to have a third AC unit over here that ducts into the bedroom bathroom area. So basically you can get air going there as well as into the mid bunk. You have some nice drawers here. One thing that's really nice about what they do is they put soft closing drawers on all of their units and they put magnetic latches as well on all of their cabinets. Nice little cubby here. This actually backlights and you have some USB ports here as well. Taking a look in the pantry. It's a reasonable size pantry and I know why because you have a room behind here that takes up some of the space. So on this side it's maybe about four inches deep. On that side it's probably 16 inches deep and it tapers back to get to that area. But you know it's a functional pantry. It's not enormous. You lose this space down here because the desk and everything is on the opposite side of this. However you know it's a functional pantry has a GE French door style refrigerator, as well as some more storage above it, storage all around. And I love the contrasting tones here. I love it when these manufacturers kind of blend dark and light tones together because it gives you much more of a high-end modern feel. Has the upgraded Insignia four burner cooktop as well. Nice single basin stainless steel sink with this cool straining rack. Nice solid surface counter. I like how they've positioned the sink on this side to give you more space over there. You have some big drawers here, plus some really tall cabinets here and plenty of space for a trash can under there. Plywood reinforced drawers. Lots of space. I like the fully extending drawers and the soft close. Has a nice large fireplace here at the floor and you can actually trigger these and pull this out for storage behind the fireplace. You have your entertainment area here, nice little shelf right there. Not really sure what it would be used for, but it is nice. You have a TV here, not the largest TV, but that's kind of one of the compromises you need to get whenever you get mid bunk units, that they're so long because of that mid bunk that you may not be able to get the largest TV. It does look like you could go to a slightly larger TV if you wanted to though. There's probably three inches of space on this side and maybe four inches of space on that side if you wanted to install something bigger. Plus you have cabinets above, more cabinets up here. You have a nice sleeper sofa. It's gonna turn into pretty much a queen size bed when it's up. You have these really cool flip up storage areas on both sides. Very cool. One thing Alliance has definitely done in the industry is they've changed the way people have thought about storage and they've done a good job giving you more storage in areas that you traditionally didn't get it. This folds down right here, dual cup holders. You know, I like the one that has the little USB ports back here so you can charge your phone or tablet. Nice freestanding dinette. Two of your chairs are likely to be up front. They call this their atrium window huge windows and this one's actually slightly taller than this one by about probably eight inches because you have the love seat here and you don't have a love seat here so you get more space you can see the roller shade is closed here nice trimmed off island section as well another thing that they do in these alliance units is they use this flush floor system where it's essentially your linoleum flooring going all the way over to the slide area and it's completely flush 
They do it on this side as well. No carpet at all in these units. And I don't really focus on things like PVC roof because, you know, it's an upgrade to some. To some, it's not. It's not that big of a deal to me, honestly. Um, there's a lot of areas where you see manufacturers advertise things that they've done. Like, for instance, you have your heat ducts down here which is cool because they're not in the floor and they're not taking up any space, but it's an extra curve that the heat needs to travel to get out. So you may not get quite the actual heat airflow that you would normally get. Now it looks nice. So you're kind of balancing cosmetic with functionality and it's probably not that much of a loss, but it is gonna be a difference. So that's just one area that they do it differently here. And they prefer this because again, it doesn't clutter up the floor with vents, which is pretty cool. Going up the steps. Okay, so here's your ladder to get up to your loft area. It is a good size loft, looks to be a queen size bed up here. You have some storage there and that area right there in the center that sticks out, that's actually where the ducting is gonna go down into the mid bunk or the multi-purpose room. You have your power plus your cable connections as well. You have your lighting and then you have your ducting up here for your AC as well. And I imagine it's all gonna be off of the front AC unit since it is a ducted unit. All right. You have a nice large window right here with a shade covering it. And you have the traditional beautiful Alliance bathroom. Absolutely gorgeous. Gives you a very residential feel. This is becoming more of a popular shower surround that you're starting to see in a lot of units, but it looks gorgeous in every unit that I see. Plus it has the flip down bench right there. A lot of space around the sink and the sink looks gorgeous with the stainless steel basin. This epoxy poured top looks absolutely stunning. There's no medicine cabinet though, so that is kind of interesting. They have enough room to have a medicine cabinet, but instead they have just a big mirror there, which again is kind of interesting. You do have drawers on the side here, plus you have some storage here as well. And they've done this in a unique way because in some RVs they have the storage here, but it's so deep you can never get to anything in the back. These only go back maybe about 16 to 18 inches because in the bedroom they've given you a pocket on that wall to be able to put things like a CPAP machine. Of course, you have a porcelain foot flush toilet, soft close, and then all your water connections are independently valved. Just in the event you have some type of a water issue, you can shut the water off. It's as close as you can get to a water manifold system without having a water manifold system. Now stepping into the bedroom area, you can see the barn style doors up front for the closet, king size bed, nice nightstands with USB and power connections on the side. Here's that area that takes up the space where that cabinet is in the bathroom. Very nice. And it gives you a tremendous amount of space in there, which I really like. Another barn style door here. This is also really cool. They put this flip up top here so you can put things that are important inside of here and kind of conceal them. Nice soft close. I love the soft close touches that they do because that's not cheap. That's a, actually a pretty significant upgrade because you have to do it on everything. You have your TV in here as well. Another day-night roller shade there. You can black all this stuff out. Plus you have your ducted air conditioning system up here and you can have it on direct fire as well by opening this up and it will just blow into this room. So if you're not using the multi-purpose room and you want to just have all the air come in here at night, you can do that. You have about a foot of space on each side of the bed to get on it. And as is very traditional with Alliance units, beautifully trimmed off closet up front. This is your washer and dryer connection. So you would have to have the two units split apart. You would put your dryer over here. There's your area that you would actually mount your dryer vent. And then on this side, you'd put your washer. And then it would leave you the center portion for your closet space. It's a different approach. You know, some folks put just a big door right here that you open up and you have a stackable unit versus this. What's your opinion? What's your feedback? Do you prefer having the unit separate like that? Or would you prefer just having one separate space here for your stackable unit and then having this space just for your clothes? Please leave a comment below. As is typical with most units, this will tip up to give you additional space and the two extra chairs that you have for your dinette. I don't think I've missed anything. Definitely a beautiful and not so traditional mid bunk style unit. I'm gonna keep calling it a mid bunk. I know they call it a multi-purpose room, but it is very cool and very innovative. And that's kind of the whole thing about Alliance is they're a very innovative brand. Are they perfect? Absolutely not. No RV manufacturer builds a perfect unit. I don't care how much you spend. You could spend $2 million on a Prevo and it's not gonna be perfect. You will have problems with it. 
the real difference is, is how they treat you after the sale when you have a problem. And that's the one area that the folks at, at Alliance have just gotten the biggest acclaim from all of their buyers. I don't know of any buyer who really has had a problem with the way Alliance has taken care of them after the sale. So there's a lot to be said about that. And this unit actually doesn't have a price on it right now. I can't find an actual price on the unit. But what I can imagine is the actual MSRP on this is probably gonna be right around $100,000. And the actual sales price on this unit is probably gonna be closer to the $85,000 price point. You don't see quite the discount off MSRP on Alliance units. And that's mainly because they build the unit closer to MSRP pricing versus a lot of manufacturers that are building units that are so much less, which gives dealerships more wiggle room. And it's not a bad thing that they do it that way. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.